space that you know they're not really aware of. And it's also the design of your site. Can people get to what they want to get to pretty quickly and pretty easily? Um, in the opening speech, the guy was talking about a retail store. I don't know who it is, but I've had some experiences like this where you expect that they would sell their products online. So you go to their website, and it's very confusing. And, you're, and I, I think this was Rise. So I was trying to find something. Surely they sell stuff online. I go to their website. I can't find a store. I can't find anything about products. Anything that's on there about products looks outdated. It's just, it's just frustrating. And so what do you do? You leave. And then you get in your car and you go to the store, find what you're looking for. But it sure would have been nice to be able to do that from home. So that's kind of where I lump all things together in identity. This exercise that you're working on right now with cutting, keep cutting, keep going. I see a lot of stopping. Um, it's going to be focused on how you get that right identity. So a logo is the part of your identity that is your what you would think of as a little mark, a little logo. It's the Nike swoosh, or it's the Coca-Cola little emblem. It's, it's, uh, it's very powerful, and it actually has a lot of value in the marketplace. A logo is made of three things. It's visual, syntax, color, and typography. I'm going to go through these and tell you what they are and how that works. Visual syntax. This is a nice little slide because you have a graphic, which is symbol of a tree, you have a photograph of a tree, you have a real tree which is outside, and you have the word tree. And this is just how do you describe something visual and describe what it is. That's what the syntax of it is. Does that make sense? Picture of tree equals tree. This is very basic stuff. I know it's going to overload you at all. When it comes to business, your mind is trained in certain areas to understand the visual syntax of a company's logo. For instance, the picture of the Apple logo equals an apple equals an apple? Maybe not? Yeah, that's a little bit more likely, right? So, when you think about the visual syntax of your logo, unless you're Apple and you can reprogram everyone's mind, to think of a computer instead of a fruit it takes a lot of dollars in advertising, a lot of interaction with customers, and many, many years in the business, and eventually it catches on. But it's a really difficult task to overcome. So I like to maybe recommend that um, start with something that's a little bit more relevant to your business. Color psychology. How do y'all feel about color? <laughs> dealing with color is one of my favorite parts of, about dealing with clients. I'll be in a room full of engineers, 10 engineers around the table. They're very focused, very uh, systematic, and you know, very practical people. And I'll put out the color options for their identity system. And people just turn into like bubbling piles of goo when colors come out. It's like, Oh, purple. No, I can't use purple. I never, no, no. My mother made me wear brown shoes when I was a child. I hate brown. I never did it. It's like you were a logical, rational person, and then we put color out there, and all of a sudden, it's just, it all goes haywire. Um, in the identity process, when you're developing that identity with your designer, what they should be doing is focusing you first on your visual syntax. What is the meaning of the forms and the shapes within your heart if it's a swoosh? What does that switch mean? What does it symbolize? What does it represent? If you throw color on it at the same time, um, it's too difficult to distinguish whether you're reacting to the color of green and you like the color of green or whether you're reacting to the form that you're looking at. So make sure that your designer is only showing you stuff in black and white before they get into your color palettes so that you know that you're making the right decision on what your identity is. What does red mean? Yeah, it's exciting. It's like fight or flight reaction. It actually does increase the adrenaline flowing through your body when you look at that color. There's been studies done about that. So
playful, it's fresh. Uh, it appeals to the sense of uniqueness because it's not a primary color. Which primary colors are red. Oh, red. Not red, green, and blue. Red, yellow, blue. Wow. <laughs> it's a secondary color. Um, the youth generation appeal is uh, much more drawn to orange. It it's, uh, works very well in younger at demographics. Yellow is uh, friendly. It's the color of the sun. It's the color of what gives us life in, on this planet. It's the color that babies see before they see any other color. They see black and white in contrasts and lights and darks. The first color they actually see is yellow. So it's a good connecting color. People also have very strange reactions to yellow. Uh, green. You hear green a lot. I heard green in the opening remarks this morning. Greenwashing. Green. What does green mean these days? Um, psychologically, it creates a lot of pleasant responses. It's, uh, there's more shades of green than there are of any other color out there. Um, it can be refreshing. Right now, culturally, it's very much tied to sustainability or environmental causes. Blue, trustworthy, dependable, confident. Uh, you can count on blue. Back to the issue of banks. Blue, kind of see that a lot. IBM, you know, reliable maybe? <laughs> Uh, it's the color of the water, it's the color of the sky, you, you're instinctually, you know that it's, it's not going to go away. There's always sky. You can look up and see blue any time, unless you're in Seattle. Then it's all rain. <laughs> Purple. It's mystical. It's eccentric and it's spiritual. And the reason is, is because it's, uh, it's a, a combination of conflicting forces. You know, red and blue together combined make purple. Red is on one end, it's on action and, and excitement and you know, adrenaline, and on the other hand, you have the constant nature of blue, which is very steady and very calm. When you put those two together, it's kind of like, oh, I don't know what to make it. so it's so enigmatic. Um, using purple in corporate identities should be really used with care. It's, um, it's definitely comes across with a really uh, pronounced uh, effect on people. And then you have uh, black. Black has come full circle in evolution. Um, about 50 years ago, the color black would have just represented funerals and curses and death. It was, had a very negative connotation to it. Now we have a color black that's dramatic, and sophisticated, and elegant. You have black tie affairs, and you know, you're wearing all black. It means you want to have a lot of presence. Power suit. I don't really own the suit as close as I get. It is Austin. You have uh, neutrals, which are classic. Uh, they're influence colors, meaning that they're really good to round the palette out. Your, your color palette should always contain, contain some neutrals, uh, so you're not always defaulting to black, white, or gray. You really think about that. There's a huge range of neutrals. It can go anywhere from brown to tan, uh, all in between. They are um, 